Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Sadid Lisani, Nawir Janani, Safi Amani, Wazid Barai Viewers of Echo from Tuba Welcome again to the program Echo from Tuba happening in Lamphal Television here in Dakar uh, Connected to Tuba as well And uh, there's a rerun of this show every Sunday night inshallah uh, Follow us on Facebook or all social media available First, long life to our Khalif, Sheikh Muntaha. May Allah give him a long life, help him with uh, all the work he's having for our community uh, at this moment. Uh, I'm so glad to have uh, Miss Sister Sumia, Sumia Moel Job. Queen. Queen Sumia, visiting <laughs> from uh, America, inshallah. Uh, Sister Sumia, welcome to our program. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu uh, inshallah uh, is it your first visit to to, to africa and my senegal my very first time to africa yes and senegal as well wow what is your feeling right now about uh, visiting um, the continent well you know in america we say we have this bucket list so that was something that i always wanted to do i know a lot of the muslims you know they try to go to hajj first but my desire was always to come here because mm. I've been around the West African community since the late 80s, mm -hmm. and my very first encounter with a Senegalese was named a brother, Sidi Torre. He mm -hmm. was a merchant, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful spirit, Mashallah. and we used to do a lot of shows together. And he used to always say, you look so full of, you look so full of, I'm like, <laughs> huh? You know, because the lights weren't on yet, meaning spiritual lights. Mm -hmm. So I always was like inquisitive. So the more and more I got to learn about Senegal, right. especially Yusuf Dora, Baba mm -hmm. Mal, mm -hmm the richness of the culture, the beauty of the heritage, it just kind of drew me to it. Mm. So as time progressed, I started to meet more and more Senegalese Americans and it just became part of me and part of them, I guess. Absolutely. But why now, the visit at this moment? Um, one, I have a husband here. Mm, Mr. Joe. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Joe, right. So, yeah. um, By the way, he's in our studio, inshallah. Um, mm. It was just something I needed to do to, mm. to, to I guess I would say to heal my own trauma um, being in America for 63 years mm. it's been very very interesting um, mm. but I'm thankful to Allah for Islam for the communities that I partner with there in Philadelphia mm. in the tri-state areas um, my life has just been a blessing journey actually I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a daughter firstborn child firstborn mm. daughter so I come through three generations of firstborn women so my desire mm to reconnect what we call in, in America's the Sankofa movement mm. is to find the answers to why. Mm. Why we don't know about ourselves. Why we don't know about Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba. Why we don't know about the richness of this <coughs> excuse me, beautiful country. Mm. Why the information about him has been kept back. Mm. Because yes, we have Islam in America, true. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a lot of is Iman and Isan. Mm. And those are the two missing links, I think. Absolutely. I think if if we can just have the five, that's good because people need a basic understanding of what the religion mm, is. Absolutely. But the spiritual journey to wellness and healing mm. comes through the teachings that I believe in Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba. Mm. Because I know since I did Jibaloo in 2013, my life has gone in the right direction. Mm. Business-wise, my life is going greater. Everything in my life has just gotten better. Mm. Um, and I think once you read his history and understand his trials and what he's went through mm -hmm. you begin to kind of understand the parallel between him and the holy prophet muhammad mm -hmm. so nice it. because it's all about struggling through what you're trying to achieve and when i saw tuba i was like wow <laughs> it's a lot absolutely it's a lot to take in absolutely i mean uh, seems like uh, it looks like you have a lot of knowledge of islam when were you, did you convert it um, I actually had gotten introduced to Islam in the early 70s in the neighborhood where I grew up in South Philadelphia. Mm. And the Nation of Islam was strong. They had businesses, they had schools. And you know, when you see the brothers and sisters dressed respectfully and being respectful, you're, you're like, 
How, how do you become like that? Right. Because you know you don't see that in your area. Right. So I was introduced first to the teachings of the Amr Elijah Muhammad. Mm. Um, best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. It got me away from a lot of the fitna Beautiful. of you know black life and. Mm. I married a brother who just truly transformed my life and from that point on my life has been going in the right direction Beautiful. because like I said Islam is just about going to school you, you don't just stay on one level mm. I mean the teachings of the Ambalaj Muhammad whether people believe or don't believe he gave us what he could at that time mm. and his son came in the leadership in 1970 Sam Dr. Rafdeen Muhammad mm. and he did a great job in giving us the basic theory of the Quran and what the Quran and Islam is really about and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him mm. and his father and I'm part of a community that is still following his his teaching um, mm. Master Allah right. and the Imam there is Imam Adris Abdul Sahir he's a young man mm. in his 40s IT expert he's fabulous Beautiful. as a leader mm. we do a lot of partnership there with mm. the community in terms mm. of feeding programs mm. we do a lot of feeding to the community we mm. have a school mm. we do a lot of things where we're in partner not just the Muslims but we try to engage the community is Farahan the uh, absolute leader of Nation of Islam right now he is but I'm not really registered in the nation oh, I'm okay. still part of the mainstream Islamic community in mm. Philadelphia and I also go to Cuba Institute okay. and we have two scholars the Imam um, Sheikh Anas Muhammad and Sheikh Amar Muhammad they're two beautiful brothers beautiful. who I totally respect they too do a lot of um, partnership with the community they do feedings every Friday they mm. give away fresh produce mm. and it's not about oh you're not Muslim you can't get the food they, they don't care mm. whoever needs the food they give the food away beautiful and it's beautiful I mean they had they have they had a school because of COVID the school is online now mm. so, so but really it's a beautiful community hearts of the brothers over there really uh, mm -hmm. brothers african-americans they need that they need healing they need help and mm -hmm. uh, Nation of Islam, uh, I'm not very, really acquainted to the community, but I, I've heard of all mm -hmm. the good actions. And, and a lot of people have transited it from uh, yeah. uh, Nation of Islam. Yeah, to, you to know, Islam and, well. and, and you know, our community uh, under Imam D Dr. Imam W.D. Muhammad, mm. we have done a lot of good, I believe, in the community. We still have a lot of work to do, mm. but we, I think we have the largest numbers of converts in America. Mm. And then, like I said, it shouldn't be about what community. It should be about the basis of the religion and how we can help each other. Because mm -hmm. I don't get into the, oh, I'm with this community, I'm with that community. Mm. I go where there's love and light. Beautiful. And that's it. That's exactly. And Islam is love, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, Sister Sumia visiting from America, Philadelphia. Queen. queen. <laughs> <laughs> that's all my documents. Tell, tell me about the, the name, Queen. Um, um, that was given to me by my Moorish tribal eldest sister Rashida Bay, sister mm. Atikia Hashim Bay gave me that name and when I was able to affix that to my legal documents that's the name that I use. Beautiful. I didn't choose it, it was given right. to me. And, and, and Sumia <laughs> sound, sounds like in Arabic like It is, it is means it? noble and sublime. Okay beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And tell us about uh, since the topic of the show again is nurturing the soul, uh, a trip to, to Africa mm -hmm. and uh, you've, you've did a journey from Islam I mean nation of Islam and also I heard I've seen some of your posts there's a lot of Moorish you know, yeah I mean you uh, know my name is L you know I'm part of the Bay and L family in North America and I'm proud of that but it's not just about the family it's about taking your knowledge and transcending it mm. because Islam is like a big universe it's mm. a big university mm. and you don't want to be stuck at just that I will call junior high school level you want to go to the doctorate level mm. and I believe with Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba it's like Jilla. doctorate PhD level well, and it's not about being stuck it's about it's learning as much as you can while you're living mm. it's not about looking down on people so oh you're not with me or I can't deal with you because mm. even in my, my husband's family there are Tijanis and Moors so it's not an issue mm. so true. and this is what I love about here it's not an issue even, I even seen a church mm. in Glory Island mm. so I know it can't just be about a religious spiritual school it's about the unity of the people mm. that's what's going to help us that's most because important. when I look at what I've been able to do to come here mm. it's a lot of sacrifice but it was worth the trip mm. very much so Absolutely. I have more issues getting on the plane on the <laughs> US side than I did coming off the plane on the African side right, so I'm right. like but well, what is the problem and I, I kind of came to this conclusion mm. The love of self, which was taught to me by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, may Allah grant him paradise and grant him, forgive him of his sins. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's about the accepting of oneself. Mm. And, and I find in America, 
Not that it's bad, but we have an issue with acceptance. Here, everybody seems to, whether Sister Carver's or not, nobody says nothing but to nobody. They, everybody just let minds their business and everybody gets along. Isn't it what African American from slavery, Jim Crow era, all this type of hurdle and that hindered really uh, their, their, their life during that time, isn't it the reason why they kind of not know about Africa, not did, don't want to hear? Because a lot of people also in America, they think Africa is well, part of the. Uh, you know, I, I believe like the this. ordeal. This is just my belief, and just as it's a personal belief. Mm. When the ancestors whisper to you, mm. you become awakened, mm. and that quest for you to want to know is deep in your spirit. I, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me at 14. Mm. No, I was 13. Mm. I was wearing gala. Mm. I rap, somebody came to the community center and showed us how to wrap our heads. This was 1970. Oh. I went to my middle school with my head wrapped mm. and was asked at the door to take it, take off. it off. And you know what I told the lady, the mm. vice principal, I'm not taking it off. Mm. So I already had that spirit in me of, from the right. ancestors very young. Absolutely. I was listening to Miles and Coltrane at 13. Everybody mm. was like, what's wrong with her? Mm. You know, because I was always different. Mm. So because I stood my ground, mm. I got suspended. <laughs> <laughs> my mother gave me a real big, big lesson, mm -hmm. but it was the idea of you want to remove my crown, and I wasn't having it because mm. I had just learned how to do it. Right. So where I sit today, mm. some 50 years later, mm. it's like right, right, right. I'm sitting here talking to you. <laughs> right. So there's definitely some miracles happening in my life. Yeah. Like you calling me and saying you wanted to talk to me. I'm like, but I just saw the brother do the interview with too, but he right. want to talk to me. I'm just a mother, community <laughs> activist, right. business person from the U.S. I'm yeah, just here because my crazy husband wanted <laughs> me to come and visit. <laughs> Blessings for Allah. I don't like crazy bad or crazy good. Yeah, yeah, you're a queen, but he's Job. The Job are part of the I kings of Africa. So, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But tell us about the... Uh, the community, the Moorish community, you translated. I don't know if I'm going um, to translate. I, I went there in I'm, search I, I really of have not much my, knowledge about Moorish. wanted to know more about Noble Ali, his mm. mission work. He was the first brother of African descent to really give the light bell to Islam, not the totality of it, mm -hmm. but to touch the soul of it. Mm. And today the Moorish community is still functioning, but for where I was mm. and my development in Islam, it didn't so much didn't serve me spiritually what I needed mm. because I came from a traditional based Islam mm. so when I couldn't go any further in the community I just went back to where I came from mm. there wasn't it's much connection there was a connection but not what I really needed but what is the exact teaching of the Moorish it's about nationality about who you are where you come from the origin of who we are Tracing Africa back to Egypt I'm not going to say in that sense, but it just gives you a sense of self and who you are. And okay. what it gave me was a sense of leadership. Mm. And once I realized that I couldn't go any further, it was just best for me to go back to the mainstream Muslim community and just continue my work there. Yes. But I still go and visit, mm. partnership with the leaders there in mm. the Moorish community. There's no issue about that. Mm. They gave me um, an entrepreneur award last year mm. because of the work that I've done in the community with my business. Mm. But it's like I said, for me, where I'm at today, it's like I'm at the, the height of my life where I'm here, I'm sitting in your studio in Senegal. And Alhamdulillah. that's just miracle to me. From where I came from, it's just nothing but miracles and blessings. Beautiful uh, Sohna Queen Sumia. <laughs> again, <laughs> I have to uh, say that. I mean, uh, visiting again from uh, USA, mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia. Yes. So glad to have her very spiritually uh, set, if you hear what she's saying right now. And uh, lots of knowledge in Islam and also of mm -hmm. uh, this path of Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba Khadim Rasul. Uh, again, follow our page, Echo from Tuba. You can like it. It's going to help, again, spread the word. This is the purpose of it people to understand who Salim Tuba is his teaching mm -hmm. and he's so internationally uh, up there people have to know he's writing the most prolific writer again uh, in terms of uh, you know memorabilia uh, you can so nobody can match Sheikh Ahmad Bamba Khadim Rasul and that yet to be known inshallah the reason why we're having shows like this in different languages though inshallah for the world to understand and comprehend mm -hmm. what Salim Tuba is uh, about now you in Dakar inshallah 
first time again in in this country w what place you visited in dakar okay i was i was here mm. and then me and my husband we went to visit family in saint louis mm. and then we went to visit the caliph general and tuba and like right. i said we went through a I'm thinking, okay, the big mosque, he probably had this huge quarters. Mm -hmm. We kind of passed the mosque, and I'm like, okay, where are we going? Okay, and I, 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 I want to come back to that first, but I want to I take it step by step. First, you know, Dakar, and then we're going to come to the bushes. <laughs> but first, Dakar, what did you visit in, in this? Yeah. Um, I'm sure you haven't visited yet, uh, Mazali Kaljinan. I haven't had an opportunity to go there, but I have visited other places. Like, we went to Gori. Mm. For me, that was bucket list had to go mm. um how was it visiting Gore? It, it was a step back in time you know for me it was profound mm. um it made me understand how blessed i am to be from this america and be able to come mm. and do the sankofa and stand at the door no return mm. i cried mm. really literally cried mm. just thinking about all the souls that left here right, like right, right. so like the music that i love is using door he's my favorite artist mm. Besides Stevie Wonder is Houston Dore. Right. He has a song called Dem. Mm. And he talks about, I saw him in a video where he was on Gory and he was talking about. With the shackles and stuff. The connection that we have as African descendants, it shouldn't be an issue about, oh, y'all from there and mm. we're from here. Because the same people left here mm. that came to America. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we're family. Right. Until we understand the same pain that happened here, it happened there too. Mm -hmm. And once we make that connection, I think our communities are going to be better. Absolutely. It's like, even when I go to like, you know, last year we were out doing trade and at the shows, doing the festivals, I would hear people say like, oh, those Haitians, those people from Jamaica, or Trinidad. Mm. I'd be looking at them and say, I don't know what you're talking about because yeah. we're all part of the same problem. Oh. Not the problem, but the, the issue. Mm. The issue was our families were split up mm. because of the slave trade. Mm. And that's it, bottom line. Mm. People from Gambia, Senegal, left by the door of no return in mm. Senegal, in Ghana. So once we make the connection back to Sankofa, mm. we're going to be okay. I hope it's going to happen. It's, it's, it's happening. It's, it is. What, what? Because last year was a 400, the 400 year, mm. and everybody was in Ghana. Mm. Well, I couldn't go. So mm. this is the 401 year, so I'm here. Right, right, right. I'm not here with, you know, mm. protocol and a mm. bunch of people. Mm. I just came as my spirit mm. led me to come right. to see my husband, mm. to meet Mashallah. my family, Mashallah. to see Senegal, to mm. see the beautiful people. Mm. You called me. Mm. So I feel very honored and I feel Absolutely. very blessed. Well, following your posters then and see how interested you are in terms of African news and stuff like that that's how we know uh, you know we cannot mm -hmm. miss it but anyhow after you left Dakar I mean you visited Dakar you went to St. Louis mm -hmm. uh, you went to see your goros well <laughs> my in-laws your in-laws like uh -huh. you said in Africa well, tell us about your visit in St. Louis I'm very busy I've seen a lot of industrialness going on so it kind of reminds me of Philly yeah, yeah. but the people got a different hustle I mean they're walking <laughs> to you with a bunch of stuff I'll be like they don't do that in my city yeah, but okay yeah, yeah. and it's just people beautiful black people i think the thing for me mm. is just seeing so many beautiful black faces like mm. mashallah everywhere i go is mm. like it's mm. empowering mm. because in my city you got a different mixture mm. but you come here you just see yourself mm. so it's been very enriching and then seeing the bridge i've seen that bridge in a lot of the videos mm. and a lot of the um pictures and mm. you know i saw that and mm. you know it's just mm. and, and and also like uh in St. Louis, it is known for a very. Oh, we went to visit the um, the room where they kept the shake. That was kind of deep. Oh, in the governor's office. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And you know, the brother was giving us the history on that. And I seen these bats. That was like, oh my God! I looked <laughs> up and I seen all these bats. Yes, I right, like, right, 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 right. You went through a lot, Al Khadim. We're gonna come back to that. But St. Louis is known as a very uh, like uh, attractive area where ladies are known for the dressing. They call that uh, afternoon of. St. Louis, Takusandar, where, okay. where, where ladies get out and dresses very, seeing your attire, the way you, I mean, you dress really is kind of impressive, like, looks like you know something about it. Um, I, I had to say, I've been doing this for a while, I've been doing this for 20 years. From Senegalese, or is it's like Just a friend in America? I'm going to be honest, mm. there's a large Yoruba spiritual community in Philly. Beautiful. And one of the queen mothers, she always wear elaborate. Mm. And I saw her one day and I said, you know what? 
I'm gonna go home and try that. Mm. And I've been fine. Right, right. So it's not. I don't like to use this term. It's not a Senegalese thing. Mm. It's just Africa. African thing. Thank you. That's it. All you right. know, my grand boo boo. I had this before Jibalu, mm. and I will continue. I just got inspired. I said, I, in my, I was in my late fifties. I said I wanted something different for my senior years. I didn't mm. want to look you know old lady like but I still wanted to look flamboyant and beautiful, beautiful because to me it doesn't matter about the dress it matters about your inside, your inside right. so but I do like the grand boobo I do like that style and I have a tail and she hooks me up and beautiful and it's good well, it's all good my kind of independent woman <laughs> <laughs> beautiful is that Thomas, uh, Queen Sumia and then uh, next step October the city oh, of wow. light spirituality tell us about the city before we go um, to the visit of the shake well like i said i'm a newcomer so I, you know you have these ideas and then i'm we're in the car and we're driving and we go to a brother's house first mm. i'm like okay we sat there for like three hours right one thing the elders told me you want to have to learn patience when you go i'm like yes a boy yes a boy like <laughs> i do that weird every morning like okay <laughs> And I get there and it's we're waiting. Mm. And I tell husband, I said, when are we leaving? Oh, we have to wait. And you know the tradition. Mm. They'll bring the coffee and the bread. Mm. Within the next half an hour, there's food. Right. And you're still waiting. Right, right. So by the time we get to the college, mm. cop out. Oh, my God. It was dark and we were in the bush. Mm. And it was like horses and cows. I'm like, is the lions coming out? <laughs> Did you have? Because... I hadn't, you know, you see the stuff in the movies and you never believe that you would be actually in something Inside like that. that. Right. But I was in something like mm -hmm. that. And I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. if I die today, mm -hmm. I'm going to die going to the see the college gym. Right, okay, right, so I'm right, just right, going right, to just right, do it. Right, right, right. But when we finally got there, I took a sigh of relief because it took us exactly maybe an hour joke for us to get there. Mm. I was petrified. <laughs> no, I had to have my faith. I had to get more stronger. I was, <laughs> it was like I never been through well, a bush like on a road where you just got just this road and there's really no pavement and there's mm. no mm. right, right. And right. all these tall things, mm. the grass. But like, did, you, did you know you went out of Tuba City? I had no idea. Okay, so they should have explained to you because what happened is the caliph. Nobody uh, told me nothing. Oh, they had to. That's not. I mean, the caliph doesn't stay the whole time in Tuba. I did not he, know. He that. had villages around, kilometers away from Tuba. I did not know. Where that. he goes, villages. Sometimes there's no water over there. There's no. He's a Sufi. That's how he's. Because in life, in general, they yes. so train that to fixate on material things right that's true. so they have to really train their spiritual uh, status in terms of uh, uh, helping themselves to 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 be always I better can see that. that's part of sufism so where he went he went to deep and uh, most of these villages he inherited it from uh, his father wow uh, basiru we wow, wow. to be the son of sheikh ahmed Bamba. wow so he doesn't stay in the sub in the city like uh, well, I was I was totally uh, unglued about it, and so I think I should have had some to tell told me he didn't tell me, right. so it was okay. Right. But for me, it was okay because mm. Allah subhanahu wa taala, like we say in our most tradition, law governs all events. Mm. So when I was in the car with my son and my husband and his brother and the driver and mm. the other brother, I mm. was like, you okay. kept playing, right? I just have to go deep in my soul because grandma and mama told me about days like this and like I came from a great grandmother and mother so it was just one of those things so you're feeling when you saw him for the first time I literally cried and I didn't want to cry too much hourly because I didn't want to spook the brother mm. the elder mm. mashallah, mashallah but he looked like my great grandfather he did yeah because you know we have Mm. Our heritage, it doesn't change because we're 400 years removed from mm. so a Africa, situation. Right. His skin mm. was so beautiful. Mm. All I could think about was my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather came from South Carolina. Mm. And the Geechee Gullah community looked like him. Mm. So I was sitting there like this. This is not happening. Mm. Then he told me some things about myself. Right. I said, how do you know that? Like what? He said, did you ever teach? I'm like, I used to be a, a, a support staff at a school. I'm right. like, and I looked at my husband. <laughs> like, and he's building a university right now in Tuba. That's why maybe he's inquiring about your, the knowledge you have on teaching. I'm not, I was just there to help the children. I've Mashallah. always been about trying to support the children. Because I'm a mom. Right, right, right. I have four children. Two Beautiful. are disabled and two 
are out in the world, but mm. Salam alaikum to them if they want yeah, to Yeah, the you know, my show. my children are the reason why I'm doing a lot of things that I'm doing because my son who's forty, mm. his name is Bilal. Mm. He works for Boeing Beautiful. in Seattle. Mm. He's like, Mom, please don't go. You go anywhere in the world, but I'll get I'll change your ticket. Trust me, she's <laughs> safe over here though. <laughs> and he's been calling me every day, Mom, you okay? And I said, Son, yeah. your mother's on her spiritual journey and So this it's gonna be a long way before they come back to Africa. You know, a law governs all events, and my children are on their journey. Oh, there's a lot of work to do, right? And I prayed to a lot before I returned to the essence of becoming an ancestor myself, mm. that they would pick up the banner. But you can't force your children. That's Absolutely. not Islam. That's, that's not but my children know that this is deep in my soul. I haven't, they haven't seen me do anything else for 40 some odd years. So this is all I know. Beautiful. But like, I've seen a lot of African Americans doing some DNA tracing to understand where they're coming from. Do you, you've done that? I did. I just wasn't happy with Ancestry.com. No disrespect to the company, but mm. I know my spirit is full of, I know that well, my th part of my heritage is through my great-grandparents are Cherokee. So I mixed the two together, mm. and I'm cool with that. Right. I'm okay with it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful sister, uh, Sumi, uh, Queen Sumiye. <laughs> I gotta be careful on that. Uh, visiting again our city <coughs> with uh, her husband, uh, Mr. Jup, of course. Uh, so glad to have them uh, visiting our country. And uh, we're gonna talk about, uh, again, your country over there. There's an mm -hmm. election going on. Yes. And uh, <coughs> Donald Trump uh, refused to concede uh, to, to Joe Biden. Tell us about the situation you guys living over um, there right now. My first thing, because you know, being in business, I'm always about preparation. Mm -hmm. So they gave us an opportunity for the first time in my ever voting life mm -hmm. to vote by ballot, by mm -hmm. mail, and I was like, I think I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. I can say this. I'm not a politician, mm -hmm. and I'm not into politics. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I know what the Quran said about Iblis, that Allah asked him to submit, mm -hmm. and Iblis refused. And I can't quote the actual ayat of the Quran and the Arabia, mm -hmm. but it's like when Allah called me to Islam. Mm. I had no crime to just say, Alhamdulillah, I say, I'm going. Right. It has been a 43 year elevation for me. Mashallah. When the people make a decision as to what they choose and you don't accept it, mm. then you're following the Shaitanian regime. You guys will be like. I don't know what I'm walking back into going back to my country, but Mr. Biden has gone through trials. Mm. He lost a son to cancer right, right. and he lost a wife. Mm. I have empathy for any person, yellow, brown, cocoa, mm. that loses a child. Mm. He's trying to get the country back. And I'm in my activation from mm. what I've seen, I'm, I'm, I may hope I don't offend anyone in the U.S. or here in Senegal, mm. but you have Camilla Harris. Mm. Who is the VP, mm. Vice President Elect? Mm. Is it the issue is that a black woman is going to be in that second seat? I don't know, mm. but it's a sign of what's to come for us as women that we can aspire to do whatever it is that we set our hearts to. Right. And I don't have no qualms about her mm. because she's a great sign mm. for our sisters mm. back home, mm. and the fact that she belongs to a large sorority, mm. which, in my research. They are very powerful in America. Mm. And I did an event with the Deltas, and that, that organization been around since 1913. Right. So, Minister Farrakhan had a, 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 an event on Facebook, and he had asked Mr. Trump to submit. And when we don't follow what God has in store for us, we mm. tend to fall into trouble. Absolutely. So, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm hoping that his advisors get him to do what's right mm. for the sake of the country. Um, there's been a lot of commotion mm. in D.C. I heard there was some scrammaging going on in Washington, the Trump supporters down there. Mm. If the country said this is who we want, mm. it's going to happen. I'm hoping so you before think the 20th that he'll just, someone that loves him enough mm. to tell him the truth. Mm. That's it. You know, hopefully. And America right now is so divided in terms of well, race. Is it, is it easy to, to heal that? Um, in my estimations, mm. as a child, 
I was blessed to go to Washington, D.C. to the museum to see Emmett Till's casket, mm. to look at video of Emmett Till's funeral. Mm. In my estimation as a woman, as a progressive woman, as a Muslim, as a businesswoman, as a mother, a grandma, I never thought I would see things like I'm seeing now. I'm thinking that era was, was over. over. Oh boy. So to see, mm. even in my city, a young man being killed by the police, mm. to see all Trayvon Martin and countless it's a long others. list, of, a long list right. of Flandel Castile mm. and we can go on and on and on mm. there's a problem and the problem is not about color it's about spirit because mm -hmm. the same spirit that brought us to America is the same spirit just trying to keep us down mm. and that's all I'm going to say about that mm. but we as people of the diaspora whether it's in America or here, we have to find our way back to our greatness. Mm. To when we governed things by the rule of love and light. Mm. Everything else doesn't matter. Because even if we have the Quran and we're not fair, mm. look what's happening in Syria. Mm. Look what's happening in Yemen. Mm. If we're not using the Quran to uplift society, then what are we doing? It's useless, right? If you say you follow Nabi Isa, alayhi salam, then where's the justice? He was about justice. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I just say that if you say you follow these prophets of old, then do what they did. Mm. And it's no sugarcoating it. Right, right, right. You can't say you believe in the Bible, but then you don't you want to submit opposite. and do what the people ask. Right, right. It's a democracy. Right, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like here, right? Right, right, right. So if Mackie Sal is out, he's out. He's out, right. <laughs> it's not a <laughs> and it's that's what I'm looking at. Right? Yeah, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. So like I, I voted, and I voted with a ballot, and I know who I voted for. Mm. And I think if the people are really fair and just, and they're following their scriptures like they say, mm. then do what's right for the sake of the people. Mm. So don't you think Democrats have little problems, though, in terms when, when they get elected, they uh, go around the I world? I really don't know much about the political process. I know the spiritual path. Mm. I, I'm a mom. Mm, you know, I'm right. about fighting. I have two disabled children at home. I'm always legislating for my children to get the best quality care, the best services. Mm. I know what that fight is. Mm. I don't know about the politics. <laughs> I know as a mother what I've had to go through being a mom mm. for 33 years fighting for the rights of my two disabled children. Mm. So, mm. But America... Like a teacher, did you ever... You wrote a book or something? In my book is my walk. I love, I love. That's mm. it. Mm. People that know me from my community know Queen Smith, she don't play. Mm. That's it. I'm a mom. <laughs> right. I'm a woman. Right. I'm a wife. I'm, I'm sure a grandmother. With, with the experience you have, you know, spiritually, there's a <sighs> lot of been helpful. I'm hoping this journey that I just that I'm on mm. that somebody under me will say, Queen Samia did, I'm doing it too. Mm. I'm hoping that I can inspire a group of women to make the hijra, mm. to make the sankofa, to come here. Mm. Even if they're not more it, mm. just to come to embrace what I've seen. Mm. And that's it. Mm. My book is my walk. That's it. Beautiful. I hope it's going to happen. Uh, very impressive uh, what uh, the knowledge that uh, Queen Sumia is uh, throwing over here, mashallah. And uh, that's the, what the world needs right now. Peace, understanding, mm -hmm. mutual respect. That's how, you know, we can move uh, forward. Hopefully, it's going to happen with positive spirits like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Queen Sumia. Again, uh, Echo from Tuba, a really special show today, uh, mm -hmm. visiting uh, our sister from America and always welcome here in Africa. That's what we need. I mean, China is respected because it's economically well set right now. And uh, if, if Africa is still uh, lagging behind, it's, it's not enough support. I mean, France is still doing its thing. Other European countries are still uh, mm -hmm. doing their thing. And Africa really need Africans first. And then the diaspora to come uh, mm -hmm. second and then uh, help pull, pull this continent that has been suffering for generations, centuries. Well, it's you know, Marcus Garvey said something. He said, mm -hmm. Africa for the Africans. And, you know, we just have a lot of work. And it's going to take some time to get things back. Mm. But I think if we in the U.S. and us here mm. can just form a unity, brotherhood, sisterhood, just having just a meal, mm. that's a start. Absolutely. And I, I think the disparity is just, we've been taken away 
from values and traditions that we don't know. And once the lights come on, you're running towards it. Mm -hmm. And no one can keep you from it. Mm -hmm. So my walk has been the repatriation of accepting myself mm. and my heritage. Mm. And it's been a battle. Because mm. I even fight within my own family. I have family members saying, why are you going? <laughs> what are you going over there for? <laughs> like, oh my God. Well, right, y'all right. just pray. I told everybody, make dua. Pray for me. Mm -hmm. Pray for my journey there. Pray for my safety there. Just pray. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's sad, though. Uh, they, they still uh, don't understand. But it's, if you kind of uh, locked into mainstream media, you know, we'll, we'll have an agenda, their own agenda going on. I mean, if you come, a lot of people, they come, I've seen visitors coming to Africa. They'd be like, how come there's a lot of Europeans around here? How come there's Asians? How come there's, people, uh, I mean, people from Lib Lib Lebanon mm -hmm. investing in this country? I'm like, they're here because they don't want you to understand that there's possibility of investing in yeah. Africa. So uh, uh, what is it uh, means, ways? Uh, well, for me, I started my journey with the West African community in 94. I started going to Harlem mm. and doing trade with the brothers and sisters there. And I knew that that's something I needed to do. Mm. Uh, I've never had a bad day doing business with my family. Mm. So I think it's a whole thing of, like I said, acceptance. I think this whole thing about, oh, we're black people mm. and you're African. was the same people. Mm. We're the same people. We just got taken. Absolute, absolutely. You know, taken is a federal crime, so we need to look into that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you can't kidnap people and don't pay them for 40 years. But that's a long story. But right. um, I'm here because the ancestors and Allah said it's time. You have to be here, right? So what, can you f tell us about ways f f to incite? And, and maybe uh, help African or African Americans over there or uh, the diaspora oh. to really uh, uh, I, I, I think the first thing a person has to do is find acceptance. Mm. Once you get that, everything else is open. Mm. If, if you don't choose, like, I have friends that are in African traditional religion, they're mm. in Ifa. Mm. I have friends that are Rastafarian. Mm. We don't argue about method. We we come together on the spirit of we need each other. Mm -hmm. Most of my clients are Christian. Mm. Sure. So it's not about religion. Mm -hmm. It's about what can I do to help you find yourself? And what can I help you to do to make you be more yourself? Mm. So my whole clothing line changed four years ago. Mm. My merchant friend in New York try to tell me, you need to get these prints because this is going to be the next hot thing. Mm -hmm. And I looked at Mr. <laughs> Ali like, mm. I had to trust that he knew better than me and he was right. Mm. I never had a bad day right. selling African fabrics and clothing. Mm. But like I said, it just takes one spark. Mm. And hopefully that spark will get a person to get off the drugs, to stop smoking cigarettes, to mm. stop drinking, and maybe become more like angelic and more healthy and mm. more happier. Mm -hmm. Because I know I've had a 40 year stop sober life. I don't regret it. Beautiful. You know, and, that, and, I, and I give all credit to the Ambilaj Muhammad for his teachings. Beautiful. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here, brother. Mm. I would not be here. Mm. So I give credit to what credit is due. And I thank Allah Most High mm. for Islam, mm. for Iman and Isan. And I, I, I haven't had a bad day Absolutely. since I said that. Alhamdulillah. I mean, we go through challenges because that's life, but mm. my life as a Muslim, mm. I don't regret it. Mm. Alhamdulillah. No. Truly nurturing the soul. This is uh, obviously the topic of, of the show, of course. Mm. Now we're going to talk about the Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba Khadim Rasul. Uh, that is, uh, you know, someone you met along the way. Tell us about your feeling about Sheikh Al Khadim. Like I said, I first found out about him in the late 80s, but it didn't click. Mm. And then. I think it was around 2012, I met a couple brothers that had little gatherings at their house, mm -hmm. and I would go visit, mm. and they would talk about the shake, and then, I don't know, I just knew, when I went to the shake, I'm going to do Bamba Day, mm. that was it for me, right. 2013, I never looked back. Right. Right. The teachings is transformative, mm. uh, I'm going to be honest, mm. coming from America, it's not a perfect solution, mm. but it will help you. Mm. Um, we've had to deal with a lot in our country, <coughs> but for me, it has elevated my life. 
Mashallah. I got on a plane by myself. Mm. And I came to Seneca. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and I had people say, I need to go with you to, to watch you and make sure you are. Right. I said, no. Mm. I have to do this by myself. Right, right, right. Not by myself, but I just have to trust, mm. have to walk mm. that it's going to be okay. Mm. So that's the thing that we don't have. We have to really understand to walk mm. We don't know that until you do something right, right. like what I just did. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm not a little young person. I'm mm. middle aged and I got on a plane. Mashallah. And I had to deal with a lot just mm. to get over here. Mm. Well, we have a little responsibility over here in Africa too, though. There's a lot of work we have to do in order to kind of uh, show up a nice, uh, you know, uh, face uh, out there for, in order for people to really want to come to Africa. There's a lot of work in government. This is a long story uh, that, needs, know that. To needs, needs to be really done here in Africa. And hopefully with time, uh, with spirit like uh, Queen Sumia, it's going to happen. But from the standpoint of the life of Sheikh Al-Khadim, uh, the exile he went through, the trial, tribulations, Amazing. and stuff like that. What is it really that you, you can tell us about it? Um, for me, the little, I don't know all of it, mm. but the stuff that I do know mm. is transformative that a person can be in a room with a lion and they try to kill you. Mm -hmm. And then they come back in the room, the lion is making such mm. or yeah, they throw you out of plane <laughs> <laughs> and nothing happens to you mm. or they put you in front of a fine squad and, and, the, and the angels of the battle, but dark come and stuff like that. And then they, they, they tell you you can't pray and you know the man was going to pray if he mm. was going to do nothing else. Mm. And he throws his rug out on the water. Mm. So it's stories like that mm. that gives me like, wow. Mm. And then when I read the Sindidi, I didn't read it in Arabic. Mm. I cried literally. Mashallah. There's a lot of books that are translated in, in English yeah, right now. Yeah, it's just that one particular um, Kasai. It's mm. like when I read it, because there's a section in he talks about the mothers, and I'm a mother, mm. and I have a mother. Right. It's just transformative. It does. You know, when he talks about protecting me from illness and agony and epidemics, and mm. you know, where he was, I don't, I can't even fathom dealing with that mm. and somebody's trying to kill me mm. but i'm writing all these poems to a lie mm. about Smart. the prophet right. it's just for me mm. that's that type of spirit is i have no words brother mm. so Beautiful. living in a country where i people have had to fight for every little corner just mm. to have some decency and to have a leader that writes transformative poems even when i listen to it on youtube mm. the arabic mm. it's transformative so mm. i'm here because allah says be and it is mm. and it was the time that i was supposed to be here right right and i married a senegalese man no i married a man i'm gonna stop <laughs> saying senegalese i married me a beautiful but it's okay. man you can, you can say that <laughs> and right our relationship has gone through like sheikh i'm gonna do many trials <laughs> <laughs> but mm. I'm going to say the Shaitani regime is a liar mm. and if you want love and mm. you want it right you got to fight for it absolutely and that's absolutely. all I got to say on that you, you, you briefly said it before uh, when Allah asked him to do the sajda he refused and wastakbar uh, wakana min al-kafirin he went pride and uh, was part of the kuffar so uh, the step of shaitan is not the one to follow uh, yeah. and uh, the one to follow is the path of Allah the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said humul khalibun he made it victorious mm -hmm. but you have to be uh, it came to my mind when you said about where you find the caliph over the bushes that it was kind of scary I'm like uh, the thing is why we have to retract sometime from the worldly life is barzak the next life mm. is, is a, it's a hard journey if you're not, if you're not prepared enough to always live up there in 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 in, in beauty in materials in in nice stuff uh, beautiful cars nice house and not be pre prepared the soul for the I big experience coming it's going to be hard that's the, the hard transition so you have to sometimes really uh, go through stuff like that in order to understand that mm -hmm. uh, life is not really uh, a, a, a joke uh, again Queen Sumia we uh, heading uh, we're going to wrap it up soon though about five ten minutes left uh, for the program uh, you about to go back uh, mm -hmm. I told you to visit don't miss Mazalik al Jinan, please I'm the try to go past uh, it's not far away from uh, okay. our studio uh, please just go and visit it it's beautiful but oh, over in 
in America, in the world right now, we all kind of traumatized by this pandemic. Yes. Uh, COVID-19. Yes. Uh, and, and I've heard uh, the strong, uh, I mean, community that is really suffering over there in America is the African-American community. Is it, is it truth? Um, well, right now, the COVID is really like in the Midwest and it's really kind of bad. Mm. New York got it kind of bad in the beginning. Mm. But even with that, <clears throat> I had to go through a lot just to come here. I had to take a test and then I had to take another test mm. to leave. Mm. So three things that I do know from being a Muslim woman and mm. learning about health and wellness, you have to treat your body a certain way. Mm. And you have to eat right, you have to exercise, you have mm. to have wellness, spiritual wellness. Mm. And a lot of the things that's happening with our brothers and sisters that they just don't take the best care for themselves sometimes mm -hmm. because of lack of knowledge. It's not a bad mm -hmm. thing. And I don't know what the COVID cases are per se amongst African descended people, mm -hmm. but if you have preconditioned like heart disease or diabetes or any kind of abnormality, you mm -hmm. might have it Suffer had. from the right. Yeah, mm -hmm. like my mom had caught it because she lives in a nursing facility. Mm -hmm. But because my mother didn't have underlying health conditions, she mm -hmm. survived she it. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. But I'm just thankful to Allah that I don't have it because I had to take another test on mm. Monday. Mm. Just Before you go back? Uh-huh. Mm. So, you know, um, mm. we just have to really be prayed up and take better care of ourselves. Mm. And, you know, certain governors are asking the people because, you know, we have a holiday called Thanksgiving where people come over mm. and they celebrate. Mm. They don't want a lot of people in mm. the houses celebrating. Mm. So mm. we just have to use our common sense with mm. this virus right, because right. it's global. It's not just in one state. It's right, all right, over the world. Right, right, right. So we just have to, you know, take the precautions and do but what they say about thing. the victims is the tall. Is it is it really hitting African Americans over there or? It did. I don't know what the numbers are, but yeah, we have suffered a lot mm. of loss. Especially during the first phase of it. Yeah, okay. it was bad. Especially in New York, it was New bad. York. Right, right. And, and I've heard there's a vaccine coming coming out, and then it's going to be mandatory for everyone to, to take it. Uh, what's your feeling about that? I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I said no comment. Love you, love. I, I, I just know that hmm. Hmm. we all got an hour. Is, is, it, is it there's a lot of conspiracies, like theories, theories going on, and people are kind of scared because when um, you hear about certain names being, you know, put up there and, and said that. I, I just trust in Allah, brother, you know. Mashallah. Whatever, what is it going to take for us to come together and work on our problems? We're going to have to do it. But I, I'm not going to talk about the vaccine because mm. I don't know much about it. But I try to be about my wellness and taking care of myself. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great answer, mashallah. Uh, you're about to go back, like you said, about having a test first before you enter again uh, America. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a safe trip, inshallah. inshallah. Uh, what is your plan when you go back? What are you going to say to I'm, <laughs> I'm going to in the, the cave. Family? I'm going in the cave for like a we go. Right. I don't want to, because I, I don't want people, like, because I'm going to tell you how what's going to happen. Right. The first thing they're going to come and say, what did you bring back, mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. I brought myself <laughs> back. Right. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time right. for all of those type of things. Mm. Um, I'm just thankful, and I have sukkah, that Allah Ta'ala mm. allowed me to make this journey. Mashallah. And finally got to meet my beautiful husband, mm. and I'm going back with a different spirit. Mm. I don't know what my next is going to be, mm. but I do hope and pray that mm. I can come back and just give mm. knowledge to the people who don't have it. Beautiful, beautiful. Is it in, in, in a, a question that's really jump up in my mind right now? Because uh, the Marit community are very vibrant in America. Is yes. It, is it? Is it? Guy, you guys connected? They have connected with African Americans. Is there still a lot of um, there. I've attended many, many circles with my brothers and sisters from Senegal, mm. but we have to do a greater job mm. in communicating things because mm. it was it's like we have things and then we find out about it later. Mm. We both on both sides have to do a great, a greater job of communicating. In terms of communication, right? Yeah, because some of us still, I don't like to say all, have this thing about y'all, them, and we are us. It's still a problem. Right, right, right. <laughs> little, it's still distant. Because right? when you get there, they're going to be pointing at you. I said, if they point at me, they want to know, oh, who's that beautiful lady over there? <laughs> I don't know uh, if that 
Yeah, it's still going on in 2020. Uh -huh. yeah. I've been dealing with the West African community for over 30 years, so it's not a problem. Right, right, right. It's right. not a problem. Right, right. Someone like Aiken and many others are doing a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, good work on that. Yes. Inshallah. But I think it's upon everybody to try to press the hand of your brother, man, your sister, woman. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't wait for somebody to tell you to get to know your brother and sister. Mm -hmm. That's something that you need to know. Mm -hmm. And like I said, me, I've always had that yearning to want to know, so I've always had that eagerness to want to know. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the bomber day, mm -hmm. I didn't have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So that kind of made me, so I could do this, I could be more myself. Right. Because they were like, like me, the women were like, me was like, <laughs> I didn't have to say, oh, well, Everywhere I turn, I see a beautiful black woman right. and a beautiful black child and a beautiful black man. So I was at home. Mm -hmm. Because when I go to my regular mom, they look at me like, <laughs> like, why are you? Well, you right, right, right. <laughs> so it's like, okay. when I'm with the Senegalese community, it's like, I hate to say I feel more myself. Right, right. Allah forgive me, but it's the truth. Alhamdulillah. And every time I went to the Bama Day, it's like more and more, so. Mm, alhamdulillah. That was that was that was a turning Masha point in my Allah, life. Beautifully said. Uh, we have the end of the program. Oh, Is it a message you <laughs> <laughs> you can give out for our brothers over there or the diaspora? What is if you have a message to send out? What I'm gonna say you? what what the taught the teacher, the old master teacher taught me. Mm. He said, "Accept your own and be yourself." Mm. That's all I got to say. Beautiful message. Beautiful. Accept your own and be yourself. Mm. And Myself. acceptance is part of the major problem. Mm -hmm. Once we get past that, we're going to be just fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely. And find you a beautiful man or a beautiful woman. Being single is not the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a cornerstone of our mm -hmm. faith. So. Absolutely. Marriage is. So what's going to be your message to your husband, family, and uh, in-laws here? <laughs> that will wrap it up inshallah and uh, thank you so glad to have you thank you mr job uh, mr tala job for being here a disciple of saint abdul samad mbake saint abdul samad great leader always helping hands with the uh, communities visiting senegal uh, hearts of to really saint abdul samad of saint soy mbake and also salam to my sheikh <coughs> sheikh mutala of sheikh abdul uh, also uh, a soldier spiritual soldier working so hard really uh, in the path of sheikh uh, there's a lot to learn there's a lot to share uh, lots of knowledge again don't forget to share I mean uh, to like our page and to visit it sometimes there's gonna be videos uploaded inshallah uh, from this particular show of echo from Tuba that had the uh, inshallah uh, the pleasure to have uh, Queen Sumia again uh, who happened to share knowledge here with us uh, from uh, America to her first visit uh, to Senegal and Africa. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Jara Jabadisa Intuba, Jara Hama Mamsha Ibrahim Afal. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Appreciate bro. It.